How's it going everyone? Today is going to be a little bit of a longer one. We're having a look at how I've set up my new network attached storage or NAT. The brain of it all being this, the Synology DS1522+. Now this isn't a sponsored video. I did approach Synology for a sponsorship, but the terms they suggested didn't suit me. So everything here I have paid for after doing my own research. So for context, I'd been working for years using external drives. I had a few drive failures, which was painful. Uh, and then about four years ago, I invested in what is still to this day, the worst purchase I ever made. And that was the Drobo 5D3 RAID system. Uh, I'm not gonna dive into why it was the worst purchase I ever made. I can make a separate video about that if there's interest, but suffice to say, I wanted something that was scalable, reliable, and fast, and it turned out not to be that. So in a nutshell, this is why I chose this whole system. I can set the DS1522 Plus in RAID 5 for a single drive redundancy. So if one drive dies after so many read and write operations or just a malfunction, which does happen, uh, the other four can keep turning without any data loss to the entire system. And because there's five bays in here, the capacity loss per drive is less than if I were using, say, a three or a four bay NAS. It's expandable to 10 gigabit, which means faster performance, to the point that I can actually edit most projects directly from here without having to copy all footage over to my workstation first. I can just edit directly from the drives via network connection. It's got easy sync integration uh, to third-party cloud services, so I'll be able to connect to my cloud accounts and use that as a sync hub instead of my workstation, which currently takes everything and then sends it up to the cloud. So it's kind of a processor hog for that, and being able to push all that to the processor in here instead makes a lot of sense. It's also got really straightforward off-site backup integration as well, uh, which is definitely something I'll be looking into down the line so I can have a backup of this entire system at home. That way, should anything happen to the studio, like a burglary or fire or whatever, or if I need instant access to full res rushes and I'm at home without having to plan ahead and copy stuff to a hard drive, I can just access it directly and it will be in constant sync. So any updates there will update here, any updates here will update there. I can also create additional lightning fast storage pools with M2 drives. If I wanted multiple users editing projects directly from here at the same time, but for now and the needs that I have for it, it's working just fine. So that's for later down the line. And all of those things combined, they'll give me the most redundancy when it comes to protecting my livelihood and protecting the data when it comes to expanding my company. So as I mentioned, I have the system equipped with five bays. I have five 14 terabyte Seagate Ironwolf Pro drives in there, which built in a RAID 5 array, RAID 5 array, gives me a total of about 56 terabytes of storage capacity with an approximate three times read speed boost compared to just one of those drives spinning on its own. Uh, there's no obvious uh, write speed boost, but for post-production work, that's not a problem because we're not writing to the rushes, we're just reading them. In addition to the NAS itself, uh, I've also got the 10 gigabit expansion card, which slots into the back and allows you to connect with a 10 gigabit connection. Now, when it comes to network speeds, your slowest part defines the speed for everything, the bottleneck. So I had to expand my workstation with a 10 gigabit PCIe card as well, because all I had in the workstation was 2.5 gigabits on the motherboard. So now I've got 10 gigabits in here, 10 gigabits in the workstation. Now I could run a direct 10 gigabit connection between workstation and NAS, but like I mentioned earlier, going forward and expanding this production company, I wanted to set up something that adds more workstations with 10 gigabit connectivity so that an editor I hire working in-house can also benefit from the faster speeds. So for that, I also needed a 10 gigabit switch. So I went with the TP-Link 10 gigabit switch, which offers five 10 gigabit ports, which is more than enough for now. Now that I've got that set up, everything that connects to my NAS can do so with the fastest possible network speeds available to the NAS. And I can also connect to the studio's router provided by the internet service provider to make my network accessible remotely via internet. So I can access it via 10 gigabit connection locally, and then I can access it also through a web browser over the internet uh, remotely. Now the router that an ISP or internet service provider provides doesn't tend to have the fastest ports on it, but that's fine because that won't bottleneck my network. 
it'll only bottleneck my uploads and downloads between the server going out to and from the internet, which is absolutely fine with me because that can all churn away overnight when I'm not actually needing, um, you know, serious kind of bandwidth. And then finally, to keep all of this safe from potential power cuts and surges, this NAS is receiving power through this CyberPower UPS, or an uninterruptible power supply. So if the power cuts for any reason, and it has done a few times uh, since setting this up, the CyberPower's internal battery will kick in and keep everything running for approximately 50 minutes. This is the 550 watt version. You can buy bigger versions, you can buy smaller versions. This seemed like plenty for me. I like the idea of being able to run it for an hour because the odds of a power cut lasting more than that or a surge lasting more than that are low. Um, but if the power cut also lasts longer than a few minutes, the UPS can also send a little message to the NAS via the ethernet port that's in this, connected to this, uh, to say time to shut down safely now. And the NAS will power down while there's still power running from the battery. That's something I need to set up still. I haven't done that yet. That's it as far as the setup goes. I've given the drive a static IP address on the network so it's easier for any machine to find it. Uh, I can just say, go to this IP address and people can find the drive. Um, and that way they can connect to it automatically over and over. Uh, now on paper, the read and write speeds are fantastic. And I could throw values at you, benchmark values and all of that, but I don't understand those, to be honest with you. So it makes more sense to me to show you a practical example um, of copying large video files to and from the NAS, since that's more in line with, you know, how I'll be using it. So I took this folder, which uh, has three large video files in it, which is a three cam interview from a documentary I'm working on. Total size for that three cam interview is 178 gigabytes. I copied that to the NAS from my workstation's SSD. It transferred roughly 535 megabytes per second, so that's 178 gigabytes transferred in about five minutes. I then dragged the same folder back to my workstation's SSD. Now the write speeds here were a little bit more all over the shop, and I don't know what that's down to really, because as I said, I don't really know computers, but this transfer average uh, kind of came out at about 200 megabytes per second, you know, with severe dips and troughs, um, peaks and troughs. I assume the, the SSD was somehow being the bottleneck here. Um, it could be because it's a four terabyte SSD, which is like three quarters full. And I know that you're not meant to, you're, you're meant to try and not fill an SSD more than halfway for optimal performance or something like that. I'm not sure. But I decided to contrast this by doing the exact same operation, the exact same transfer between my NAS and the internal NVMe M2 card that I have in my workstation which has way faster read and write speeds than the internal SSD. So once again, I dragged the footage from the NAS to the M2 drive, and this time I got write speeds of around 900 megabytes per second. And going from the M2 drive, internal drive, back to the NAS, I got write speeds of about 820 megabytes per second. So that is, that's pretty amazing when you contrast that with plugging in a little external SSD or a little, even a, a hard drive, um, it's, it's night and day in terms of transfer speed. Now, I'm sure there are a dozen things I can do to optimize this even more, but like I said, I'm about the limit of my knowledge here with computers and networks, and it works fine for me as it is, suits the needs, so I'm happy. If you've been looking to set up your own NAS for video editing, and you think this is a system that would work for you, I've put links for each item in the description. Uh, if you buy those parts using the links, well, you'll help generate some income for this channel and, you know, support it to keep helping me make these videos. It sounded really clunky. Basically, buy stuff using those links. They'll make money for the channel. I'll keep making these. Let me know down below what you thought, and if there's any easy fixes I can make to improve the performance even more, please try and explain it like you'd explain it to your granny. And if it's something I can do, um, I might actually implement that change to the system. All right, I hope you enjoyed it. Give it a thumbs up, hit that subscribe button, ring that bell, and I'll see you next time. Cheers.